Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be unto you. The mercy of Almighty God be upon you and always his blessing. I'm going to open up in prayer first. I'll say it in Arabic and then I'll say it in English, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim maliki yawm al-deen. Iyaqa na'budu wa iyaqa nasta'in. Iddina sirrat al-mustaqeen. Sirrat al-ladhina anamta alayhim. Ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim wa lad-dalim. Ameen. With the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. All praises are due to Almighty God, the Lord, cherisher and sustainer of the world, most gracious, most merciful, master of the day of judgment. Thee alone do we worship, thy name we speak. We seek, show us the straight way, the way of those on whom thou hast bestowed thy grace, those whose portion is not wrath and who go not astray. I mean. We, the uh, leadership here uh, at the Philadelphia Masjid, we call this press conference because we really wanted to uh, make it known uh, our concerns and our position here uh, from uh, this community here the Philadelphia leadership and we first like to thank all of the uh, city officials that are here all of the uh, religious leaders that are here and all of the community members that are here uh, irregardless of what your religious persuasions may be uh, we're grateful that you've come out to support uh, not only us, but to uh, support the community uh, with this tragic situation that has happened uh, here during our Eid festivity. But we all know that all of us stand before Almighty God and we trust in Him, and we have to make Him sufficient for our life. You know, so again, we had to take a position, and this position here is coming uh, from the leadership of the Philadelphia Masjid. Uh, so with that being said, I want to bring uh, Brother Saiful up, uh, who's going to uh, make some comments uh, in, in reference and relationship to that. Assalamu alaikum. Glory be to Allah, who's perfect above all things. Our thanks and praise is deserving to only Allah. La ilaha illallah. Nothing is worthy of worship, no prayer except Allah. A law is bigger, a law is greater, a law is more significant, a law is more important than what than everything. A law is more important than what took here, took place here on April the 10th at this sacred place, not the Philadelphia Mass Jed. And we would like to say to everybody, the position of the Philadelphia Mass Jed is a position of praise, a position of gratefulness to a law subhanahu what the island, because we had an Eid Mubarak. And it was the kata of a law that on April the 10th, in the, on April the 10th, at that certain time, that the violence will arrive on the plane at the Philadelphia Mass Jet. But what the violence didn't know, that the Philadelphia Mass Jet was just coming off the plane to Ramadan, and we was changing flights. And as the law upon what the island says, after the blessed month, you will get a reward. So there's no sadness here at the Philadelphia Mass Jet. There's no despondency here at the Philadelphia Mass Jet. What's here at the Philadelphia Mass Jet is praise to a loss upon a what the island mm -hmm. for E. Mubarak. Amen. And it was a me E. Mubarak because when you look at what took place at this sacred place, with the sacred worship of Ed and Fitter, we looked at the weapon that was confiscated from a 15-year-old. We looked at two rival gangs shooting over 30 shots. And we know that there's been mass shootings all across America. No venue has been untouched or unblemished by the ugly head of violence. And the, and the, and the, the, the violence the hand grenade of violence has devastated every venue in our society. Not only has it touched the religious community, it's touched the commercial community. It touched the political community. Violence has no barrier, and violence has not been impeded by anything. But on the day of April the 10th, 
violence was impeded at the Philadelphia Mass Gym because we came out of the blessed month of Ramadan and we were still wet with that blessed month. And we got on the plane of El Fitcher and we landed and Allah gave us a beautiful landing. And the landing makes us say that as Muslims, this is the time for Muslim men to have composure. This is a time for Muslim men to have strength because we are here today not for the press. We're not here today for the political community. We're not here today for people positions. The most important thing to us today, we are here for the Muslim community. We are here for the people who hold what is sacred to them called Ed Afitra. And that is not the property of the Philadelphia Mass Gen. Ed Afitra is not sliced up and given here and given here and given here. It's one whole act of worship. It's not just the property of Philadelphia, it's the property of every Muslim, wherever they are, and not and all across America and all across the world. And infringement upon that, it touches the heart of every Muslim wherever he at. And so we say to each and every Muslim, and we also recognize it just doesn't touch the hearts of Muslims, it touched the hearts of decent people. It touched the hearts of people who have any our odor of humanity in them. And when the head of violence raises itself as it has did in so many places, we sympathize. It's not just with the Muslims. We sympathize when it happens in the supermarkets. We sympathize when it happens at the malls. We sympathize when it happens at our university. Today all we can do is pray. We send our kids away to get an education and we don't know whether they're coming back. Some children have went to get an education and they have not come back to their homes to see their parents, to see their siblings. So this violence is not nothing that we need to hold our heads down about. This violence, you understand, is not for us as Muslims to walk around and sad and gloom and listen to the stories of people of what shouldn't happen and all that. No, this violence that happened here at the Philadelphia Mass Jail is a show of Allah's blessings at this sacred place. We have seen one person have a gun and kill hundreds of people, 50 people, 40 people. One person. We have more than one person on this ground. And they had weaponry that, I mean, believe me, we want to thank our, we want to pause here and thank our p police officers and everything. A lot of times, a lot of times our police officers, you know, I, I read on the, the internet and we want to distinguish the Philadelphia mass jail from everybody else. I read on the internet where, well, the police didn't do this, they lie. The voice of the Philadelphia mass jail is that we respect the men and women in blue because they're not police officers. They are mothers, they are fathers, they are brothers, they are sisters, they are aunts. They are uncles. They are people who leave house as a mother, a father, a brother, a sister, a cousin, a friend. And they put on a uniform that says police officer to serve our community. And they're deserving of our respect. And we need to start looking at them that way. And maybe then we won't keep our police officers distant from us. Maybe we will we will stop thinking that they don't have feelings. So when we talk in derogatory about our police force, know that you're talking about somebody's mother. Know that you're talking about somebody's brother. Know that you're talking about somebody's sister. Know that you're talking about somebody's eye. Because that's what they are before they come out as a police officer. And so the men in blue at the Philadelphia mass chair, we love our police officers. And we support our police officers. And we thank a loss upon what the island that our police officers was here on that day called Ed Fitzer. I was asked by the press, do you think that the police station didn't give y'all the adequate security that you need? And I said, no, nah, I don't think that at all. I think the police gave us adequate security, and just because this happened, violence has been happening everywhere. I mean, we have watched violence go to the most sacred places. We have watched it go to the halls of our democracy. 
We all have witnessed that's on the news right before our face. Violence is on the march. And a lot of times we talk about violence and we come together and there's been many eloquent speeches on violence. So I don't need to give a speech on violence. What I need to talk about is the great plane landing that happened here at the Philadelphia Mass Year. I know we all can recall in the past, I think it was Pilot Sully, you know, and they talked about the miracle on the Hudson. But we want to talk about the miracle at Philadelphia Mass Year and the landing of the plane called Air Da Fitter. And the reason why it was a blessing, because there's no way in the world that we could have woke up the next day and we not had not one fatality, not one person die. A law work for that. E. Mubarak for that. We have not had one person seriously injured. Allahu Akbar for that. And we talked to the people that was injured. We talked to them in the hospital with a young sister who broke her leg. And I also would like to say, we are sensitive here at the Philadelphia Mass Gym. People property was left here. And we was told that somebody said, come get your property or it's going to be thrown in the trash. That was not the voice of the Philadelphia Mass Gym. And I talked to the news people, and I brought them in the room where the property was. And the property was outside, and we brought it back inside. And people came to retrieve their property. And we would like to say, here at the Philadelphia Mass Gym, anybody who had lost anything, and we're going to believe in what you say, you come to this administration, and we will replace it. And we will replace it brand new. And this administration apologized for what took place on the day of the Eve for your Eve being disrupted. But look at the great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I was listening to the news and the lady on the news said that April the 10th, the day of the Eve celebration will, will forever be remembered as a day of terror. No, 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 no. April the 10th will always be remembered of the day of a miracle. Because it's a miracle today that we still have all our loved ones with us. It's a miracle today that all our pioneers, our elder believers are safe. None of them are wounded. Nobody lost their mother. Nobody lost their, their son. Nobody lost their father. Nobody lost a child. So we need the brothers in this community that's going to be in the first ranks. We want you to be in the ranks of the prophet, peace be upon you. We want you to be in the ranks of the Quran. And the ranks of the Quran don't have no weaknesses in it. So we're not here today to moan, and we're not here today to grieve. We're here today to say praise. So I want all the Muslims here to do the chant with me, the chant of what we say when we do the Ed, Ed, um, Kufar chant. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi ilham. As-salamu alaykum, we're going to be mad Lord Dean. As-salamu alaykum. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most compassionate. Uh, first, I would like to say, on behalf of the Philadelphia Messiah, we extend our appreciation to all those who have responded to the needs that we all have. And that is at a time like this that we form a circle as we are in right now so that we can tighten our ranks and being in a circle we can see each other because we are here today to respond to a shooting that took place and that was perpetrated by some of the miscreants among our youth. And remember, they are our children. But the reality is this. There are some very, very deep fault lines that separate us. And the fault lines are not shrinking. They are getting larger and larger. And so it's up to each and every one of us who are here in support of the Philadelphia message to know that our position is very clear. We can't allow and afford
this chasm to keep taking place. When you have fault lines and they get bigger and bigger, any movement creates an earthquake. And I think we have seen the earthquake. As a matter of fact, we experienced one last week. But at the same time, we are still standing here today. So let me just um, respond and just say this, because we don't want to be too long. The media is here, and the media responds to the chalk line. Whenever there's a chalk line somewhere, they come. They'll respond to the police tape line around a crime scene. And the reality is this. There are other lines that are being ignored. Because what produced what happened is the result of red lines. It's the result of the pipeline. It's the result of the welfare line. And the welfare line is generated by not having access to adequate education, to equitable education, not having access to employment. So all these lines exist. And we are here today to let you know that we are not going to be satisfied with just making some statements and then leaving. Because we can't fulfill what we have to do with some words. So in order for us to really begin to get to work, because everybody has to put their name on the bottom line, yes. and we all have to come forward on the 27th of April, two weeks, we want to be in this park across the street. Mm -hmm. And we want to have a community day, a family day. And we want all the organizations that are here, because we have trauma units. We have units that deal with health and education and all of the things that we know our youth need. You are here today to support the Philadelphia Masjid. But the reality is that we all have to now come together and begin to fill in the fault lines. Add what you can, add what you know you have to add to fill in the gaps so that our youth can have access to us. Because they look at us and we are too distant from them. Yes. We are in, uh, some people say we're in silos, but some of us are in containment vessels. Yes. You know, where our fuel is all spent <laughs> and we are just in a situation where we have nothing of value to add. So we want to show our appreciation. We have elected officials, and I really want to call on the DA to make one appeal. This is not a day for speeches. It's not a day for people to posture themselves. I'm calling the DA forward because the DA, the police are the first responders. And if I can get permission from the commissioner, can I mention the diamond in the rough? Can I? I won't mention the last name, but the sister who took the perpetrator down, her name is Diamond. And we should remember that name. And she's a tremendous jewel for us. She's a diamond, and she's not in the rough. She's dealing with the roughnecks. <laughs> so let us, again, appreciate those who are involved in law enforcement and criminal justice and the support services that come from elected officials. We have many elected officials here today. And we are all here today not to compete with each other but to complement each other. And the best way to complement each other is know when we leave here, we have our marching orders, and if we can be here on the 27th. And we really would like to make it a community day, like a fair of all the organizations who have something to offer. And come forward at your best. And here's what, how we address, and I'll conclude with this before the DA comes on. We are addressed as humanity. And the address goes like this. Oh, humanity, oh, people, surely we have created you from a male and from a female. And we have made you into organized groups and ethnic identities, ethnic groups. And the best ones among you are those who are better able to fulfill their responsibility and their duties. 
So we are here as males and females. We are here as different organized entities, whether they are social, whether they are civic, whether they are law enforcement, criminal justice, religious. We are here as organized entities, and for the most part, we are here as African Americans. Because this, and I shouldn't even say African Americans, we are really here as members of the black community. Because um, this is an issue that no one can resolve but us. So everyone is encouraged to come back on the 27th so that we can get the process or keep the process going. And we need to have a network, a network of neighborhoods. Uh, West Philadelphia, we believe we can take the lead. We see all of our uh, soldiers here, our elected officials. We believe West Philadelphia can take the lead. And we're challenging the north, the south, the east, and the, and, uh, the northeast. But we have to organize in uh, a network of communities. We have to connect the dots, and if we all can come together and complement each other and show that this is not just a one and done, come out on the 27th because the Philadelphia mess did, we're going to go, I hate to say, to the scene of the crime, but we're going to go in the park and we're going to show our youth that we're not going to let teenagers want us in the house and make us afraid to go outside. We can't do it. And some of them are too old to get their butts smacked. <laughs> but we have other tools in the toolbox <laughs> that we can use. And I would like to call one of those tools forward right now is a DA. Yeah, because again, he's, he's going to uh, this is some of our help. Sorry, can you uh, introduce yeah. him? Yeah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm Chairman Commissioner Omar Sabir. And I came to this masjid on Maghrib of that night of the Eid. When I came, I had my children with me. I wanted to get an update firsthand about what happened. And as I came, people were picking up some of their belongings. And I saw a mother, and she came back to get her shoes. She didn't have her shoes. Some people left their pocketbooks. Some people left their cell phones. And when she came back here, she said that she was traumatized. She said that she had fear and anxiety when she pulled up to the street right here on Wallusen Avenue. Full disclosure, I am here as elected official but make no mistake about it, I used to play inside of this school right here. Okay, I used to play right, literally, inside of this school right here. My daughter goes to school right across the street in Masjid Kuba. So we are clear that this nonsense will not be tolerated. And we are calling on everybody. We are calling on, yes, the law enforcement officers. We have the top law enforcement officers in our city right here. One, whom is a Muslim. But... We are also calling on law-abiding citizens as well. It's not against the law for you to carry a firearm. When we saw where there was a mass shooting in Southwest, there was a law-abiding citizen who took down that perpetrator before the law enforcement officers got there, and that stopped that person from moving forward. So this is not a message of us just going la di da along with the get-along. This is for real. I'm a father. Anybody who wants to pick up weapons, and if you are a legal, law-abiding citizen, you can defend yourself. If someone wants to take up weapons and shoot where there's innocent children, you have the authority to defend yourself. And if that means that you have to take them down, well, so be it. They have to be taken down. You can defend your house. Someone wants to rob you. Someone wants to carjack you. You can protect yourself. And I want everyone to be clear about that. And moving forward, I have strong commitments from all levels of government that there will be safe here. There will be more pol police patrols here. And there is a myth that something happened inside the masjid. No, that's not true. It happened all the way over there. But this is a large area. So, yes, we're going to have more police. I've spoken to the 16th district, and I have, assured, have assurances 
that they'll be patrolling, not just now, but they'll be here every Friday, taking a look-see and making sure that everyone is safe. And I want the message to go out there that Philadelphia Mass Shit is open. Whenever you want to do a Janazza, whenever you want to come on back in about 90 days for another Eve, it's going to be safe for you to pray, and that foolishness will not happen. It will not happen again. Not on my watch, not on any of these other brothers and sisters' watches. And we're, current, and we're encouraging everyone to come out and pray. And there is a coalition between this gun violence and voter apathy across our city. So if we want more resources, we have to get our family and friends to get out and vote so that our law enforcement officers can get the resources from the federal government, the state government, so that we don't have to raise your taxes. So it's very critical. So if we do not vote, we will definitely lose. And we must remember that the more we vote, the more we get. And real quick, before we call our DA on, my sister-in-law is here. She's with the Black Brain Campaign. And she is offering services now. Come on up here real quick. Come on. Hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead, sister. Go ahead. I sound like them. My name is Farida Boyer. I'm the executive director of the Black Brain Campaign. We provide free mental health therapy to anybody in Pennsylvania who needs it. They get 12 free sessions. But today, I spoke to my colleagues because I understand it's not enough of us to do the work. My colleagues are black Muslim um, organizations, Black Men Hill, Mainline Psychiatric, um, Just Breathe. We're all working together so that we know that there's trauma in our city, there's trauma in our community, and we want to ensure that our families and friends who have been impacted by the violence from the Eid al-Fitr will have the resources that they need. Tomorrow at 7 p.m., we're hosting a virtual town hall meeting. I encourage you to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to get the link so that you can join. We're also going to offer group sessions that will be specific for adolescents, for children, because they all have been impacted in different ways. So we want to ensure that we are providing the necessary services that, that they need. These are licensed pro professionals. One of them are, is a psychiatrist. So we are all working together to ensure that we um, have the resources in place. And on that day, on the 27th that the EMAM just mentioned, we will be here. All organizations that are involved in this, we will be here providing, uh, we will have therapists on site. We will have resources on site to provide the necessary services um, that you need. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Before I bring the district attorney on, I want to say to each and every person that's here that the most important thing to us here at the Philadelphia Mass Jet is our children, is our elders, is our pioneers, is our young men and sisters who come to this sacred place to fulfill their act of worship and festivities called Ed and Fitzer. This is why we are here today. This is not a political gathering. This is not a social activist gathering. This is for us to bring the necessary healing to our community. The people that we called out today, we called them out to come here to show their support with their presence. We don't necessarily need their voices today, but we understand that there are certain voices that we do need. It will be disrespectful for us to have our commissioner here and our commissioner don't speak to us. It would be disrespectful for us to have our commissioner here. And if he wanted to say a few words, that he can say a few words. It would be disrespectful to have our district attorney here. And for him, if he wants to say a few words, he can say a few words. But we don't want nothing highlighted here but the religious and spiritual reality of Ed of Fitcher. And nothing supersedes that. As I said, a law is bigger, a law is greater, a law is more significant, a law is more important than what? Than everything. So today, this gathering is to reassure, reassure our children that they can come back out here because they're traumatized. This gathering here is to reassure some of our women and some of our elders and some of the men that you can come back here because they traumatized. And that is the focus. 
if we want them to know that that is possible because we have every sector of the society here showing that concern. So we don't want anybody to feel slighted because you don't get on the microphone. We don't want anybody to feel slighted because you don't get a picture before the press. Because we're concerned here about the pain of our community. We're concerned here about the pain of the Muslims. We're concerned here about letting them know that you got real leadership here. We got leadership here who know how to go in the operating room and operate and cut out the gloom, cut out the sadness, cut out the despair. That's what they need to see. That's what they need to hear. And all we need to know is that the city, and I say that our mayor, and it would be remiss if I don't mention her name, she has responded with the full resources of the city. She responded the same day. She sent us everything that we needed. And as she said, if there's anything that we need, call her and we'll have it. So let's keep this focus here on the Philadelphia Mass Jet as a physical place, but let's keep it on the Muslims at large. Let's keep it on violence and let's keep it on a short and brief talk. All we need to know is that our city officials stand with us from every department, from every agency, and they stand with us to make sure that we deal with a problem that has been all invasive in our society, and that's called violence. So at this time, I want to bring our DA on, and I want to bring our DA on, and I want to give him the support. Anybody that have any information that will help him bring the perpetrators that commit that hideous crime and depart the there on this sacred grounds, then you come forward and you give that information. And don't worry about giving that information. I told you to give that information. The Philadelphia Mass Jed told you to give that information. The Muslims in this city told you to give that information. And when you get that information, you're not a snitch, you're a believing man. You're a man that don't fear nothing. You're a woman that don't fear nothing. And we need people to understand that and to come forward for that. And so, as I said before, before I close out, we're concerned about our children. We're concerned about our elders. We're concerned about our pioneers. We're concerned about the believers and how they feel. We're concerned about the hurt and the pains in their heart. We're not concerned, like I said, about bringing 10 and 15 and 20 people on to speak today. Only thing we're concerned about to let them see that the Philadelphia Mass Jet has respect, that the Muslims have respect in this town. And this is why I see officials is here. And so let us keep the Philadelphia Mass Jet up front. Let us keep the Muslims up front. Let's keep the sacred things up front. And let's keep our unity up front. I bring to you the District Attorney of Philadelphia. Thank you. I'm not here for a speech. I'm here for work. And I say this because I didn't just come myself. I came with three different units of the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office who are working very closely with our law enforcement partners in the Philadelphia Police Department, in federal agencies, and with our community because we are truly all standing together and we are in this together. I came with the Gun Violence Task Force of the DA's office, Bill Fritzy, and also Marianne Aguilar, whose achievements are well known. I came with the juvenile unit of the Philadelphia DA's office, headed by Bob Listenby, our first assistant. And I also came with the Special Investigations Unit, which is required to investigate this incident, and that is Vincent Corrigan and Karima Yelverton. We are not here to stand around, we are here to work, and therefore I have a request. And I will be brief, and I will make that request. On the 27th, there is going to be an event here, and we have some work to do between now and then. That work is to make sure that on that day we have safety. That work is to make sure that on that day we have justice. And the way that we get to justice is by having the truth. It is by having the facts. It is by making sure that everything that we do is accurate and is individual. And what that means is that we must have the right information, we must have all the information, and we must protect anyone who comes forward to give that information. Give that information through Imam Kenneth Nuruddin's great institution here, which is the Philadelphia Masjid. Give that information 
through the Philadelphia Police Department and our Commissioner Kevin Bethel, give that information through the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office because we are going to have justice here and that justice will be based on truth and that truth will come from a lot of people including some people who were out here when this went down who ran different directions when this went down and who know things that we all need to know so that we can stand together and be together and make sure that when we come together on the 27th we have safety we have justice and we have truth thank you We want to thank everyone who came out and attended and supported us. We want to thank our city officials. We want to thank all the religious leaders and just the community at large. Again, we thank you all. We look forward to seeing you on the 27th. Uh, may Almighty God's mercy and blessings be upon each and every one of you. Again, thank you. I said, I want to wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.